Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. This tutorial is part of a beginner's HTML series. I'll be using the Chrome web browser, the Visual Studio Code editor, and the live server extension for Visual Studio Code to view the web page. There are links to these tools, starter code files, and all resources in the description below. Let's move on to what else might go inside of our head element. And remember, everything inside of the head element is not seen on the web page. And with that said, I've dragged the Visual Studio Code window to a little smaller size on the left and Chrome to a little smaller size on the right. But I'm just going to expand Visual Studio Code for now because anything we change inside of the head element will not be seen on the web page anyway. So I'll click the Expand button and we'll just see our code. Now, I had mentioned that we could store more metadata inside of the head element, and that is definitely some of what we see. So let's add a couple of typical meta tags that have metadata that you would commonly see. The first being for the author of the page. So we'll say name, the attribute name, is equal to author, because that's what type of meta tag this will be. And then we'll have a content attribute, and this is where you can put your name. I'll put my name for now, since I'm the author of the page. And then let's add another meta tag, and let's give it a name as well. And here we'll put a description. This will describe the web page in a little bit more detail than possibly the title would. So here we can put more of a sentence. And once again, we need the content attribute to do that. Let's say this page contains all the things I am learning how, if I could spell how, to, and it looks like I'm extending the page. So in Visual Studio Code, I'm going to press Alt-Z in Windows to make sure the text continues to wrap. And then I'll say all the things I am, or I am learning how to create as I learn HTML. There we go. Now after that, of course, you still need to close the meta tag and control S to save. And again, I got the words to wrap. Let's go to the view menu. If you scroll all the way down, you can see word wrap is Alt Z. It may be something different if you're on Mac or Linux. So you might wanna check the view menu under word wrap if you want your words to wrap and not just extend forever to the right here. Now we've added more description about our page. Now this information could be picked up in a search engine or some other service that wants to learn more about our web page. However, let's go ahead and put something in the head where we will notice the change when we go back to the browser. And that is to add what is called a fave icon. And we can do that with a link element. Let me use lowercase once again. And inside of the link element, we'll have several attributes. One is the REL, which stands for relate or relation. How does this relate? to the web page. And here we're going to provide an icon. After that, we need an href. This refers back to HTML that stands for hypertext. This is a hypertext reference. So we're referencing a resource. And here we're going to reference a file that I have now put inside of our folder that is called html5.png. And if I click the file explorer over here, you can see I've now added an image file that's a .png file, html5.png, and you can download this image from the resources. And you can see it's a small little icon for the HTML5 logo. So I'll close that. I'm going to click the file browser to have that disappear again so we see this. Now we have one more attribute to add, and that is the type. What type of resource is this? And here we'll say image slash x, dash icon. And now we can save this and I'm going to go ahead and minimize the code window. And now if we look at our web page in the browser, notice we have an icon up here. My first web page now has our little fave icon beside the title. And that's what we added here in the head by adding the fave icon with a link element. 
Now we won't add any more here today, but this is the same area where we would link to CSS files and even JavaScript files and other resources that we pull in from the web. So the head is a very important part of the page, even though we don't see the content of the head inside the body of the page. And I said we wouldn't link to anything else here today, but since we do have this default CSS to make our page a dark mode, if you added this, and once again, this was optional, if you prefer the white page with dark text, you didn't need to add this, and we had this style element here to hold the CSS in the head, but that's not usually where you would find it for a page. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll expand Visual Studio Code again, click the File Explorer, and over here inside the file tree, I wanna create a new file. I'm going to call this main.css, and I have an empty CSS file. All we need to do now is go back to the index, select the CSS that we put here for the HTML on the body, not the style tags, just select the CSS that's between the style tags. I'm going to press Control X to cut it out of the page, go to the CSS file, and Control V to paste it into the CSS file. Control S to save that file. Now back in the HTML, I'm going to remove the style element, and I'm going to add another link. And here for the rel, not ref, but rel, we have a style sheet. Because we're adding a CSS style sheet, our href will now point to our CSS, main.css specifically, and our type, which isn't actually required anymore, but since we have it, let's go ahead and add text slash CSS. But our browser should know what it is, even if we didn't add that at this point, because that's really the only type of style sheet there is, is a CSS. Now that we've made these changes, let's save the file, and let's go ahead and click the button again to make our code shrink back down and look at our page. We can reload just to make sure it has reloaded and everything looks the same. That's because we are pulling in our code. I'm going to go ahead and hide the file tree here. We are pulling in our CSS code using our link tag inside of the head element. Now finally, I'm going to create an error on purpose by deleting the greater than symbol at the end of this link tag and saving the file with Control S. Now why would I create an error on purpose? Because we want to validate our file again. And this will let us know that yes, we've got the right file and we expect one error there. You don't, of course, have to create an error on purpose, but that's what I'm doing to make sure I'm selecting the correct file out of the correct lesson folder, because I'm in lesson two now. You might be working on the same file we started with. There's the CSS file and the image file. I'll select the index.html and check, and I should have at least one, if not more, errors because of that. Yes, that created several errors on the page just by leaving out that one closing greater than symbol for the link text. So now if I save again, Visual Studio Code formats our code correctly instead of trying to pull the closing head tag up here. And I'm going to go ahead and reload or re-upload the file to check it. So we choose index.html. Now I'll click check and document checking completed. No errors or warnings to show. So just by missing one little thing in our page, we could have a whole list of errors. So follow the prompts from Visual Studio Code. Notice how if I leave that out, here in my theme, this turns red or pink. It doesn't look quite right. Visual Studio Code wants to format it differently if I save the file and it pulls that up here instead of putting the closing tag. There's several cues to show you that you have an error in the file. And so follow those prompts in Visual Studio Code and then remember to always validate your page. And we always do that at validator.w3.org. I'll get rid of everything at the end of that and here you can pull it up and then we choose File Upload. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.